So far in our discussion on carbohydrate molecules, we focus on the open chain form of sugar. So if we're examining, let's say glucose, the open chain form of glucose looks like this. And if we're examining, let's say fructose, well then the fructose open chain form looks like this. Now, although the open chain form of sugar molecules does exist to a very small extent inside our body, these open chain sugar molecules actually undergo a cyclic reaction to form ring structures. Why? Well, because the ring structure of the sugar molecule is lower in energy and more stable than its open chain counterpart. Now, what exactly is this reaction that takes place that allows that less stable, higher in energy open chain form to transform into the more stable, lower in energy ring structure form? Well, what this reaction is, is basically a reaction between a nucleophile and an electrophile. The nucleophile in, the, in this case is an alcohol group on the sugar molecule, while the electrophile is the carbon of the carbon and that can be either an aldehyde or a ketone depending if we're looking at aldoses or ketoses. So if we have an aldehyde group on that sugar molecule, well then it reacts with an alcohol group on that same sugar molecule to form a hemiacetal. And likewise, if we have a ketone instead of the aldehyde, that ketone will act as the electrophile reacting with the nucleophile, one of the hydroxyl groups on that sugar molecule to form a hemiketal. So let's begin by focusing on aldohexoses. And the aldohexose that we're going to use as our prototypical example is glucose, more specifically the D-glucose. So remember the D-glucose simply means this blue hydroxyl group found on the last stereogenic carbon, carbon number five, points to the right side and not to the left side. Now what basically happens is a new, an intramolecular nucleophilic reaction takes place in which the hydroxyl group, the oxygen of the hydroxyl group found on the fifth carbon basically attacks nucleophilically the carbon of this carbonyl that is part of this aldehyde group. And we form this bond and that bond is shown in purple here as well as here. Now, why did I draw two different molecules A and B? Well, because if we examine this reaction, this oxygen can either attack the carbon carbon from the top or from the bottom. And because it has the option of attacking it from these two sides, we form two different isomers. So isomer A and isomer B. Now, isomer A is known as the beta d glucopyranose We call this a pyranose because it is a six-membered ring. Inside the ring, we have six different atoms. So we have carbon one, carbon two, carbon three, carbon four, carbon five, and this oxygen. And that's why we call it a pyranose. The glucose simply means we begin with the D-glucose. So this is the ring form of that glucose molecule. Now, now, what is the meaning of the beta? Well, if we examine this carbon number one, the beta simply means that the hydroxyl group of this carbon number one, known as the anomeric carbon, points in the same direction as this group here that is bound onto carbon number five. So this entire CH2OH group points in the same direction, so up, as this hydroxyl group. And when they point in the same direction, that type of sugar is known as the beta anomer because this carbon here, carbon number one, is known as the anomeric carbon. Now, on the other hand, if this nucleophile attacks from the other side, we're going to form the other anomer known as the alpha anomer. And this is known as alpha d glucopyranose. Now, notice in this particular case, this hydroxyl group points in the opposite direction with respect to this entire group here that points up. So this points down and this points up. Now, when we discussed the open chain form of sugar molecules, we said 
that it's the Fisher projection that is used to basically describe the three-dimensional arrangement of the atoms, the stereochemistry of the atoms in that sugar molecule. Likewise, when we're describing the ring structures of sugar molecules to basically describe the stereochemistry of the ring structure in that sugar molecule, we use the Horworth projection. And these are examples of, of a Horworth projections. And so in the Horworth projection, what we have is these thick bonds are the bonds that are coming out of the board. So these bonds here are coming out of the board and they're essentially perpendicular to the plane of the board. So these atoms here are basically coming out of the board. And so what that means is, for instance, this hydroxyl group points upward and this hydrogen group points downward. So we see for our D-glucose molecule, which is an example of an aldohexose. Hexose means we have one, two, three, four, five, six carbon atoms, and aldo means we have the aldehyde group on that first carbon. So for D-glucose, an example of an aldohexose, the hydroxyl group on the fifth carbon, this blue hydroxyl group on the fifth carbon basically attacks the carbon number one of this carbonyl group that is part of that aldehyde and we form a mixture of two types of isomers. And these isomers are known as anomers. So anomers are isomers that differ in this first stereogenic carbon, in the arrangement of atoms on this first stereogenic carbon. So we have the alpha and the beta anomer. The alpha anomer means that the hydroxyl group on the first carbon points in the opposite direction with respect to this group here, which is shown here. While the beta anomer, these two groups point in the same exact direction. Now, inside our body, about two-thirds exist in this beta form, one-third exists in this alpha form, and a very, very small amount, less than 1%, actually exists in this D-glucose open chain form. Now, as I mentioned just a moment ago, we have the Fisher projections that are basically used to describe the stereochemistry, the arrangement and the three-dimensional position of atoms for the open chain forms. On the other hand, we have the Horworth projections, which are used to describe the stereochemistry of the cyclic sugars, and these are examples of the Horworth projections. Now, let's take a look at another type of sugar molecules. So remember, we have aldohexoses, and we also have sugar molecules that contain ketone groups, and these are known as ketoses. So let's take a look at a specific example of a, keto a ketohexose, basically a six carbon sugar molecule that contains a ketone group. And the example we're going to look at is D-fructose. So in D-fructose, we also have one, two, three, four, five, six carbon atoms, just like in this particular case, but instead of having the aldehyde, we have this ketone group. And so now what takes place is this hydroxyl group on the fifth carbon, so this hydroxyl group on the fifth carbon here reacted with the first carbon, but in this case, this hydroxyl on the fifth carbon will react with the carbon that is number two, because this is the carbon of the carbonyl that will act as the electrophile. And so now, instead of forming a, a uh, six-member ring, instead of forming the pyranose, we're going to form a furanose, and this is a five membered ring. Why? Well, because we're going to have bond number one, bond number two, three, four, and bond number five. And that means we're going to have five atoms and five bonds inside our ring. And just like in this particular case, we can attack from the top or from the bottom. Here, we can also attack from the top or the bottom. And, we, and so we also form the alpha and the beta anomers.
So we have the alpha D fructofuranose and the beta D fructofuranose. In the alpha case, this group points in the opposite direction as this group. In the beta case, this hydroxyl group points in the same direction as this group here. So for D fructose, an example of a ketohexose, the hydroxyl group of the fifth carbon, so carbon number five, this hydroxyl acts as a nucleophile, attacks the carbon of the carbonyl, which happens to be carbon number two, not carbon number one. And so in this case, we form the five-membered ring, and that's why we call these furanos, furanosis. Now, what I haven't actually shown is a second type of reaction can actually take place. So in the case of the defructose, in the case of all ketohexoses actually, we can also have, un under certain circumstances, we can have the hydroxyl group on the 6 carbon attack the carbon of the carbonyl nucleophilically. And if this hydroxyl group on the 6 carbon attacks this carbon, instead of forming our 5-member ring, we're going to form a 6-membered ring. So for defructose, a second reaction can take place. In the second reaction, not shown on the board, the hydroxyl of the six carbon, this one, will react with the ketone group, carbon number two, nucleophilically to form a five-member ring, and this fructose molecule is known as fructopyranose. So fructofuranose simply means five-member ring, and pyranose, is in this case, means six-member ring. Ring. And just like we have the alpha and the beta anomers, we can also form the alpha and the beta anomers of fructopyranose. So basically, the takeaway point from this lesson is the fact that inside our body, the open chain form of sugars does not actually predominate. It's the ring structure, the ring form that predominates because it's the ring form that is lower in energy and thermodynamically more stable than that open chain form. Now, what also what I haven't mentioned also is the fact that ribose sugar molecules, which are actually examples of pentoses, so hexoses contain six sugars, but pentoses like ribose contain five sugars. And pentoses like ribose are important because they're constituents of nucleic acids, DNA molecules, and RNA molecules. And just like hexoses, aldohexoses, and ketohexoses, pentoses, five-member sugars like riboses, also exist predominantly in their five, in their ring form, more specifically in the five-membered ring form. So ribose molecules, when they undergo this intramolecular reaction, they form a five-member ring just like this defructose does.